பாய் போவான் வணக்கம் அஸ்லாம் வலைக்கும் குட் ஈவினிங் டு யூ குட் ஆஃப்டர்நூன் டாக்டர் வாரிக் ஃப்ரம் யூரோப் தேங்க் யூ டுடே வி அரேஞ்ச் எ ஸ்பெஷல் லெக்சர் திஸ் இஸ் ரிலேட்டட் டு அக்ரிகல்ச்சர் in this uh, agriculture field and this lecture is uh, conducted and organized by the Ravana Aviation Research and Development Division and if I say that uh, Ravana Aviation Research and Development Division vision uh, we establish in ancient concepts and technology that have been forgotten and mission of the Ravana and DD is creating a venue for multidisciplinary cost positive research the objectives of the ravan dd you can see here the assist uh, researchers in presenting their ideas and research on global multidisciplinary research platform educate young scholars and ensure that they do study in new dimensional areas third objective of this uh, ravan dd educate the younger younger generation and encourage them to think outside of the box here to decision the aim in order to reestablish electromagnetic agro cultivation practices in sri lanka agriculture sector the objectives of today's session is very important here ensure new agricultural discipline in sri lanka draw attention to the all matching techniques of nature we establish this them among the sri lankan public now here you have to understand knowledge and wisdom total difference now wisdom means it comes with the nature and before you gain the wisdom you have to make sure you are disciplined then uh, focus in attention then finally you can have the wisdom sri lanka Sri Lanka has a well documented history around 2500 years back and an unbroken record for even uh, even to today great chronicle mahavamsa and its extended chronicle tulvamsa etc it covers from 6th century bc to 19th century ad now according to mahavamsa the great chronicle to of sri lanka the preparation for the foundation for the stupa is described in follow chapter 24 verses 2 to 17 now in sri lanka we have two terminologies uh this huge monuments that is uh, we call dagab the initially 3rd century bc the we got that technology from india that is stupa now dagab concept is built by sri lankans now here the i bubbling uh, the some information you can have about this foundation of the ruan valley site that is a built in 2nd century bc by great king rutugam dagab this is dagab concept huge edifice now this foundation was 17.5 uh, feet depth so there are three metal layers if i if i go through this uh, lowest layer that is the 8 inch iron layer you have and middle metal layer 8 inches copper and top metal layer 7 inches silver in between they uh, make that uh, compress butter clay and some earth mix layers now if it so now this is not uh, you know that uh, revealed by the sri lankan archaeologists but the concept the con this concept this should be the world the oldest capacitor so this is the way we have the capacitors now here you can have the styles of the modern ruanisaya in the dagaba people in your left side when you come to this right side that is the ancient the structure or we can say the style of the ancient one is say dagaba so you can see there's a huge difference the top 
of the dark web. There you can have the upper stone, we call in singular term, upper, gala, and chatra. Chatra is like an umbrella. Now you can see that uh, dome. Now, why these uh, people make like that? This is, we know that this is the Sri Lankan Buddhist uh, culture, it's a uh, sacred place. So I'm also Buddhist. But if, why, if we looking in different angle, it gives more information. Now this is the present look, how it looks like. Now they are the residence place of the uh, priest or the monks, the Rwanda Sire, the Dagaba, you can have this uh, pond. It's named as key pond. So why they put as a key pond? Now, if I keep your attention in there's a one uh, place, that's a drainage system from the Rwanda Sire Dagab area. So this is, uh, you have to think again, and the way we use this water management, it's not like what we are seeing and what we have that information, what we reveal so far, it's totally different. Now, other than that, the Buddhist culture, if you go to this uh, Hinduism, you know that Gopuram, the structure of the temple, Hovi, the top of the Hovi, you have that, we call this a Gopuram, the top of the Hovi, Gopuram, you have the Kalasam. The Kalasam is made by the brass. So there is a tradition, there was a tradition and belief. The ancient people, they put seeds inside of this Kalasam and keep. Now you can see in this structure, inside of this structure, the lingam, the followers, in the followers, they always making some pour into this uh, lingam by milk, herbs, water, so many liquids, and they drink. And the rest of the things they wash and they drain to this uh, cultivation area. If you go to this uh, right side of this slide, you can see the mount of God Shiva, God Nandi, the bull. You know this uh, agriculture sector, the bull is the, we call fertilizer, if more fertilizer to this uh, nature. Now this is the, again, you can have the layout map of the ancient city of Sri Lanka. There is a first kingdom of Sri Lanka, Angadapura. Now this is center city. You can see the center is the city of ancient city. And around that city, you have the stoop and dagab. And again, it says uh, three layers. So there are the, some tanks, human made tanks also there. So why these people make this arrangement? Why did our ancestors do like this? Is there any reliable reason behind it? Was it an ancient nature related technology? How can we justify it? Yes. <clears throat> uh, this is basically the research done by the three scholars, geomagnetic field variations at the equatorial electrojet station in Sri Lanka. Now, <clears throat> I would like to explain a little bit about this electrojet in the Earth, the atmosphere consists of the ionosphere. They are in the daytime, this ionosphere is uh, splitting into four layers. D layer is the lowest one, and the E layer, F1 and F2 layers. The density of the ions, ions will be higher in the daytime. When, when, when it's come to night time, what happened? It will contract and go up. So only you have a T, a D and E layer. Now here, they have done this uh, research based on the Peradenia one spot. Now, I would like to orientate you. You can see the blue color spot, Trivandrum in India. 
and this Indian trigonodrum is very close to this zero. That is the magnetic equator. This magnetic equator is here and that's moving. And when you come to this red spot, that's a paradigm. So what they did, they measured this uh, magnetic field. Here, H is a horizontal component, and here you have the Z is the vertical component, we call dip. Vertically, you can have this drastic change you have in the paradigm. This is located south of the magnetic equator. I'm talking about magnetic equator. It's very important. You can have this is happening for noon, the morning time. So this is because of the now you can see if it is magnetic depth is increases, induced current, which is produced through this ionosphere, will increase. Now it goes to according to this uh, statistics, and you can have this uh, research in the uh, internet. Google, you can Google, you can have this. This induced current goes to 600 kilometers. How might this unique resource be put into good use of the current state of Sri Lanka? It's very important. So there, this uh, gentleman, Dr. Yannick Van Doreen, he's an engineer in agriculture and biotechnology and has more than 15 years of experience and know how about the applications of the electroculture and the influence of the electromagnetism on plant growth and development, water and soil fertility. So I Google because I went through this, all these uh, research papers. I found this gentleman and I request to the email to response me. Today, he is going to give very important lecture and practically how you can build up this concept in Sri Lanka. So I'm not going to waste your time. In the meantime, I would like to mention uh, this session is streaming on YouTube as well. So if anyone who wants to participate, you can inform them uh, and send them this link as well. So Dr. Yanix, I would like to hand over to you. So th thank you, Harisha, Harsha. Um, do you hear me? Everything OK? <laughs> yes. So uh, thank okay. you to all for listening. Thank you to invite me uh, to do this presentation. And I hope it will be very interesting for all of us um, to uh, just uh, to discover already new techniques that maybe you don't know about, um, about electroculture. So it's a whole new world uh, of applications for agriculture that can be very interesting in your country and uh, in, in, in every country in reality. Well, what is electroculture? Um, I will coming to that is mainly the use of electricity and magnetism to help plant growth and soil fertility. Um, so I will show you. So you have you see my two internet sites. I have many internet sites, but uh, those are my main two. It's in French, but you can with Google Translate easily uh, learn a lot and read a lot. Uh, maybe in future there will be one in your language. Mm. Oh, sorry. So I'm Yannick van Doorne uh, from uh, 1976. I, I'm engineer in agriculture and biotechnology. Um, I have my own company, Symphony on the SRL, and I became with time, with the, with the years, with my passion for, for, the, for the subject, I became like a world expert on electroculture applications about everything around the influence of magnetism and electricity on plant growth. And so I developed a whole set of applications uh, that are really very interesting in agriculture that can make 
uh, that can replace all uh, uh, ch chemical uh, fertilizers and pesticides. Um, I'm also working on a book that will be like a manual. It's almost ready. In a few months, it, it will come out uh, about uh, uh, a whole set of techniques of, of electroculture. So what is an electroculture? You see on planet Earth, we live in a huge magnetic field and all plants need that magnetic field even the animals even we if we don't live in that magnetic field then we become sick and we deteriorate very quickly uh, the whole evolution on earth lived uh, uh, grew up in that magnetic field and this is very important for health and uh, and growing we will see that but it's not only a magnetic field. We have also uh, an electrical field between the sky and the and the and the soil. We have a huge electrical field of around hundred to three hundred thousand volts. Uh, this uh, this corresponds with uh, around uh, one hundred volt for each meter high. You see, it's really a huge electrical field. Um, that where we live in and a magnetic field and and those electrical and magnetic field changes over the places on earth and um, those fields are also very important to carry like uh, waves like uh, atmospheric uh, radio waves uh, that are naturally produced by uh, thunder storms and uh, and sun activity sunspot activity things like that and those are all very important for the healthy growing of plants. And so we will see how we can use uh, uh, to improve plant growth and to, how we can use that in agriculture, how we can uh, use the beneficial effects of it. And uh, Harsha uh, talked already a little bit about it uh, with uh, uh, certain monuments we find back Ah, there's some somebody writing on it. Um, there, there are monuments uh, uh, that use in reality those magnetic and electrical field and amplify it locally, where the plants grow a lot better around. But uh, not many people know about that. But it's just about knowledge, wisdom. So. Or there is somebody is playing with the I don't know how it it happened. <laughs> uh, what's happening here? Yeah, sorry. So scientific research. There is a lot of scientific research um, uh, in the world about a lot, like for example, here we see. Uh, an article, an extract, magnetic uh, effects on plant growth. Uh, so ma magnetic field effects on plant growth development and evolution. So and so you have like more than 900 scientific articles that you can find in, in science about uh, the, the magnetic effects on plant growth. And, uh, and you have also so many articles about the electrical field effects on plant growth and seeds, uh, seed germination. So it's something that is known in science, but uh, for the moment, it is not really used in agriculture because uh, people don't know it, but uh, we, we just have to uh, uh, use it and you will see huge results. So the, the knowledge is also known since centuries ago. There are already books uh, talking about that like uh, two, three centuries ago. I have a lot many, I have many books about, uh, I found many books in, in, uh, in, in uh, libraries all, all over the world about that. There are a lot in France, Russia, uh, probably in India too, for sure, in, in China too, everywhere in, in the world in, where there are big libraries and big agriculture uh, knowledge, we, we can find those information. So, uh, so. so for example, you have that book, uh, it's a recent book, The Magnetic Pulse of Life. And there you will find more than 200 pages of science references about 
the geomagnetic effects on terrestrial life. So just to, to show you how many science articles there, 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 there is about the subject and, uh, and uh, almost, uh, uh, it's only a few people know about that. Hmm. So the electroculture applications. So I will show you a few electroculture applications, uh, but there are many, many more. You have, for example, the, the paramagnetic energy round tower is that tower you see on, on the right, for example, uh, that you can build in gardens, but also in fields, in large fields, large fields. Um, you have also the atmospheric electric antenna. It's uh, like a huge pole with uh, wires on top of it. Uh, uh, and, and, and this is uh, also very useful to collect uh, electrical atmospheric energy and to, uh, and to communicate it to the soil and increase soil fertility like this. This can, you, you will see it's also very uh, useful uh, with huge effects on plant growth very easy to install. Uh, there is also the cylindrical magnetic antenna uh, that you will see that can increase local magnetic fields and, um, and also increase plant growth. And you have uh, other techniques like uh, energizing or uh, uh, electrifying irrigation water and spray water or magnetizing it. And this helps also a lot to the growing process. You have also uh, uh, uh monuments or also uh, uh systems like uh, antennas like in the form of a pyramid that can electromagnetically charge paramagnetic volcanic rock uh, dust or or sand and also and then uh, you can transform uh, uh, a simple rock dust or sand in in a, in 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 a, in a fertilizer in a real fertilizer but a fertilizer that works by transmitting that electrical charge or that electromagnetic energy uh, to the soil that helps plant growth. That's an example uh, among others. So here you see, uh, so first we will talk about the paramagnet en energy round tower. Uh, this is inspired from the round towers we find all over Ireland in Europe. Uh, you, you see there uh, round towers that uh, can that have a lot of similarities with uh, what you find in India, like uh, the stupa, the dagaba that Harsh, Harsha wa, wa, was telling about. Uh, there are a lot of similarities with the angle of the cone you see on top and things like that, and also the rocks and uh, maybe also the use of metals inside because you, you will find a lot of iron in that kind of tower. And um, and uh, it was discovered in the 40s by by uh, uh, Phil Callahan. Uh, it's an, uh, a researcher of radio waves. He discovered that those towers act like uh, like antennas and transmitters of uh, um, low frequency radio waves of the of the atmosphere of the, of the Earth. And uh, now, uh, today, we call them also the Schumann waves. And it was discovered that when those, those, um, uh, those natural uh, uh, radio waves uh, are amplified locally, that all plants grow a lot better. And so then we, we, we begin to make uh, little towers uh, to, to, to copy this and make uh, little towers like you see in my garden or like uh, you see on that rock uh, below on bottom. Um, you can make this little or big and, uh, and then you will see and, and put in the fields and it's made of certain rocks inside uh, that make it uh, working. And also the hat with the special cone in the angle, and also made of certain rocks. And then it acts like that antenna, and uh, and all plants will grow a lot better all around. It's really working very well, very easy to install uh, anywhere in the world because those electromagnetic uh, low frequency radio waves are very useful all over the world. All plants and animals need, also humans, need those beneficial waves to, to grow healthy and to stay healthy. 
for example, for, for, from where come those uh, radio waves? So they come from thunder strikes. Every time you have uh, thunder in the world somewhere, uh, it, it generates those uh, low frequency radio waves that will travel all over the world. And it's continuously, we, it's like a heartbeat of planet Earth. And, um, and so you have scientific articles that are talking about that. You, you see, uh, for example, that schematic with the frequencies like 7.83 hertz, 14.1, 20.3. So that, that's all uh, uh, the Schumann waves and those low frequency earth waves that are collected by those towers. An example you see here on, uh, on the bottom uh, below, uh, a little experiment everybody can uh, easily uh, try. It's a, a little tower in a, in a pot with uh, uh, radishes. And you see on the left that the radishes uh, grow a lot bigger than at the right where the radishes uh, are still very little. Mm. So it's very easy to, to test uh, when it works very well, you see that. And what are the effects or what can we, um, um, uh, um, what can we gain from those towers? So an example, it can increase the yields by 30 to 100%, sometimes it doubles, sometimes it's only a few 10%, but, uh, it can really increase the yield uh, dramatically. So increased resistance to stress, cold, heat, dry or wet conditions. So it's like the plants become more resistant to all uh, stress of the weather or extreme weather. And, and so that today it's uh, important because of uh, uh, when we speak about uh, climate change or, or problems in the climate, uh, 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 that uh, create a lot of problems in agriculture uh, in Europe, probably also in your country, I don't know, but uh, it can help uh, very much the plant to resist. Um, also, the plant become more uh, resistant to pests and diseases in, 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 in general. So when they stay healthy, you need less pesticides uh, to treat uh, those pests and diseases. And when you use uh, a lot of electroculture techniques all together, then you, you will discover, you will observe that you have almost no pest on disease anymore. Um, now, you have to see that in each country too, huh? but it's, it's a general. general. Um, also, what is very, very interesting is that you have more nutrient content. The plants are growing bigger, better, more healthy, uh, but they have also more nutrient content, like 30 to 50% more. And in comparison with chemical uh, fertilizers, with chemical fertilizers, in most cases, uh, the nutrient content is, uh, is, uh, is less. And, and with uh, electroculture techniques, uh, it's more. So it's only good for health and, and well being of all the people that will feed uh, with those uh, very nutritious. Uh, uh, vegetables and plants. An example how to do, uh, you have, for example, here, um, uh, an example, in, it was in a field of a, of a vegetable grower, and you see a vegetable that is called uh, kohlrabi in, in, uh, in, uh, in Germany. And uh, you see in my hand on the on the right, it's a little kohlrabi and on the left, a big one. So the big one was all the kohlrabis that it, it corresponds with the size of the kohlrabis that were in a radius of 60 meters all around the tower that was around one meter 50 high. The size of the little kohlrabi was the kohlrabis that were uh, planted uh, that were are uh, grown um, uh, further away of 60 meters. So the, this gives you an idea that just a little tower like this with, uh, with the clay tubing uh, uh, have a huge effects on plant growth. Hmm. Another example, it's uh, of, 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 uh, of good friends in France that have um, 
that you, that like to use those round towers and they have uh, already three years in a row they have the record of uh, uh, the, uh, the 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 French record of the biggest um, a sunflower uh, in France. Uh, it's uh, from Richard uh, Ambert in the Vendée in France. He he has huge huge results in his garden with all those techniques. And you have also Mehdi Dao. It's a vegetable grower, and he has the record of the biggest uh, pumpkin in France uh, last year. So it's uh, also with uh, the use of those towers and also other electroculture techniques. So you see, uh, and, and that all without any uh, chemical fertilizer or pesticides. Mm -hmm. It's only organic uh, growing techniques and uh, electroculture with it. Mm. Um, thank you. So if somebody is sound is on, uh, please deactivate your sound, uh, the microphone. So. Uh, it's, it's for better sound for everybody. So how to do? Ah, a moment. I check. Oh, sorry. So here you see um, how to do. So you have uh, two drawings of uh, uh, towers. Um, it's just a clay tube or a ceramic tube. It's even a, a lot better a ceramic tube. Uh, so it's made out of clay. Yeah? And, um, and then we put inside, we put uh, paramagnetic rock. So paramagnetic rocks or rocks that are uh, sensitive to the magnetic field of the earth. And uh, so that can be measured with devices. And we just uh, fill them completely with that rock. And that makes then that kind of antenna effect. Um, so you can put like uh, one to three towers for one hectare is sufficient to treat a whole hectare of land. So uh, it can be, it's very interesting. What is also very interesting is that you just need to put it one time and then it's every year it will work. It's not like a fertilizer that you have to buy every year or make again every year. No, with those round towers, you just put it one time and you will see all over the years, the plants will grow always better. So it's uh, uh, in comparison than without. So a tower radiates around 10 to 40 times its high height. So uh, the higher you make the tower, the biggest will be the area that will be treated. But you can also put a lot of little towers. It's more easy to make. And uh, you can also, like this, uh, cover huge areas. Another example with paramagnetic rock, what you can do. So paramagnetic rocks comes uh, usually from uh, old volcanoes. So mines uh, that are in old volcanoes, uh, it's uh, the rock, uh, the, the mostly gray in most cases that you find in the center of the volcano. And um, here, for example, you see beans in on the bottom, on the on the right bottom, you see the beans that have uh, get the paramagnetic rock, and uh, on the on the left, the beans that uh, didn't. You have rows of beans each time. Uh, on the top, on the right, you see also uh, two rows of of carrots uh, with the paramagnetic rock, and uh, and uh, at the left without. You have to know that that kind of fertilizer, but it's not a real fertilizer uh, in the way that you don't use it. Uh, it, it doesn't consume itself. It's, uh, it will stay in the earth with the, its good effects. If you put it one time on the soil, you will have each year those, those effects. Huh? It can really, uh, it stays um, in the soil if you, if you, um, if you use it uh, in the good way and um, and so it's it's very interesting because it will always increase the fertility of your earth the the more you will put um 
uh, with a certain limit, uh, of, uh, of course. But uh, uh, the, the more you will put, the more you will have uh, good results. It will increase the fertility, the life, the microorganism in the earth too. So it's, it's very good. Mm. The, this is a device uh, that is called the PCSM invented by Phil Callahan. And uh, now I make it also um, because it was not made anymore in the world, but now I make it, I make a new version that is even more precise. But uh, th this makes it able, you have also laboratory devices that are even more expensive, but, but this is a version for farmers, for example, or for uh, advisors. And um, and uh, this makes it uh, possible to test the different paramagnetic rock that can come from mines and volcanoes and to choose the best one to uh, improve the soils. Another technique is the atmospheric antenna. So an atmospheric antenna is like... Um, uh, uh, yes, it's like uh, those uh, big poles that... Uh, or like those antennas you can find on buildings too, to protect the building uh, from, uh, from thunder strikes or from storms. Well, uh, when you put those uh, big poles with wires uh, in the field, you will see that uh, it will collect atmospheric electricity and it will help to the plants growing all around uh, in the field. Uh, with like for example three to five poles like this you can uh, treat a whole hectare of land and increase dramatically the the, the growing uh, process of the plants uh, this was already known in 1783 uh, there are books uh, like electricity for the plants from abbe bertolon um, uh, it's a very interesting book uh, but you have also the research of uh, uh, Director of the Agricultural Institute of, of Beauvais in France in 1893, with a lot of uh, information, research, uh, tests, uh, experiments they did with those kind of uh, atmospheric antennas. And improved over the years, they developed. Uh, um, uh, 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 always better and better atmospheric antennas to uh, increase plant growth. So you have my versions, uh, for example, but you can also use a very simple one with just uh, pieces of wire, uh, uh, but you have also more sophisticated ones. For example, here below on the left, you see uh, corn. Uh, you have one corn uh, here that was the control uh, plot and at the right you have two corn and uh, two corn ears uh, from uh, the plants in the treated field so you it 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 had it had doubled the yield of the corn in in that field with those antennas uh, it was an example there was also a research uh, uh, in, a, in a French university of pharmacology uh, from with uh, Martine Querel in uh, 84. And um, she observed that the dry weight of the plant, like a mint, had 20% more dry weight. So the plants were bigger, but also more dense. And, uh, and, and for example, on Datura, they, she had 30% more uh, dry weight. And the essential oil content was also a lot more. And this gives the idea of the nutritious, nutritious content, the nutrient content in the plants. And on mint, it was 27% more. And on Datura, 57% more. So it's really a huge difference. It's not only uh, 2, 3, or 5 percent. It's uh, more than 20 percent more uh, essential oil content. Here we have uh, Justin uh, Christoflo. Um, so Justin Christoflo is really a, a major inventor, pioneer in those electroculture techniques. For, for me, he he, he would have got the, the uh, a Nobel Prize for agriculture if, if I have to decide it because he is really a major inventor and he he showed all the possibilities you could do and he 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 really dramatically increased the yields uh, at, at a lot of places all over the world with his techniques. 
he was known uh, to uh, to Australia, New Zealand, uh, uh, China, uh, um, Germany, France, and that uh, it was before World War II. It was not in the years of internet like today. Uh, it was really, uh, he had huge results. And the title of his book is interesting because on, on that old moment, uh, he, he, he writes suppression of all nitrates, so uh, the chemical fertilizers and other chemical fertilizers. So he, he, he is convinced that with those techniques, he can suppress, he can, uh, um, he can replace all uh, chemical fertilizers. So it's very, very interesting. And this was already proven in the 20s, 30s, 40s, you see. Uh, you see me uh, on the picture in my garden with the flower that is normally never as high, but here with an antenna that was close uh, to me, uh, that uh, flower of, of Lupin, uh, named Lupin in, in France, uh, was like uh, uh, 1 meter 70 high and 1 meter 40 width. It was really very big. This is also a plant that is uh, used uh, to produce um, grains with a high protein content in Germany. Um, so Justin Christophe Lowe, you see him on the picture with giant leek. Uh, with his techniques, you see also a picture with the tree and a, a big pole of 6 meters 25 high. He showed how to use it to uh, to fertilize a tree. Um, you see also a schematic on the field with north south because those techniques, are there certain techniques uh, are um, interesting to install uh, in the direction of the earth magnetic field because uh, they act like collectors and amplificators of the earth magnetic field. And then we put like wires north south in the field, for example and connect them all together to one or more antennas. For example, how to do the most e the most simple version would be to put just um, uh, an iron pole, um, uh, like it can be an iron pole uh, for from construction, for example, uh, in the soil, like an iron pole of three, four high or even more. And then we put at the end on top uh, little pieces of wire, of iron wire or galvanized steel wire or even copper wires. Uh, it has to be a metal, but you can use uh, almost any metal. Um, and, um, and then you put that just as simple as that in the soil, uh, away from uh, big trees because uh, nothing has to be uh, bigger than the pole uh, close by, otherwise uh, we will collect the energy in place of the pole. Um, you can also use a wooden pole and put a wire uh, uh, along the pole uh, from, uh, uh, the, from the atmosphere to the soil, to the earth, and you will see all plants will grow a lot better. Uh, the highest the higher you make the antenna, the the bigger will be the area that will you will um, that you will energize in a certain way. Huh? So, if you want to treat a whole hectare, for example, uh, one hundred meters on one hundred meter square, then you will use like three to five antennas. The more you use, the better it will be. Um, it can help also to prevent hail if you uh, if if you have that in your country. I don't think so, but uh, I don't know. But in in Europe, uh, there are more and more hail storms, and and uh, this can also help to prevent hail because uh, it will collect the atmospheric electricity. And hail storms comes when. Uh, there's too much electricity in the clouds, uh, uh, and then when it discharges, it makes a very big uh, hail, uh, hail um, um, balls. Huh? Another technique, it's uh, energizing water. Uh, I will go very rapidly over it, but you can um, 
uh, it's really a very simple technique also used in nature. When you have a storm uh, with thunder strikes, you have a lot of electricity in the air. The water is different than at the normal uh, rain and uh, the plants grow a lot better. And so uh, this gives the idea to electrify the water and, and this helps really a lot uh, the uh, fertilization. An example, you see me with um, uh, uh, close to a plant that I given uh, energized water and uh, at my left you have the similar plant uh, without energized water. You see a huge difference. You can do that in wall fields too. I have farmers uh, in my uh, customers that uh, use that too. And you have also even in the book of L'Abbé Bertolon, you have that uh, picture of 1783 uh, uh, where you see somebody uh, spraying electrified water on a tree because uh, so you see that they know that already from uh, uh, two centuries ago. Another technique is the uh, cylindrical magnetic antenna. And so here you see, um, so that is something I invented uh, uh, personally, uh, uh, inspired by all the old techniques before me. Huh? Uh, I uh, improved it a little bit. And you see, um, uh, it's just a, a row of magnets uh, that I uh, put, uh, uh, that I improved uh, with beeswax and, and, uh, and a circuit also. And, um, and this is connected to uh, galvanized steel wire and that you can put on top of the soil or you can put it in the soil. It's even better in the soil. And, um, and so you, you, you put the, the magnet oriented with the compass, with the earth magnetic field. This is very important, otherwise it will not work. It has to be in resonance with the earth magnetic field. It acts like a collector, like a, you have a radio that, that collects the radio waves in a certain way uh, that captures it. Uh, you have here uh, like a natural uh, radio for the earth magnetic field. And then you see on top the image uh, in, in my garden, it was a little test I did, but I did it already now also in very big fields with farmers. You see on, on the left, the, the potatoes and eggplant uh, that grow a lot bigger, uh, they are growing uh, with that uh, antenna. Uh, inside the soil and at the white you see the same potato plants and eggplants a lot uh, less uh, 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 more little uh, because they don't uh, benefit of that uh, magnetic energy. You see then you have just to put you can do by hand you can make uh, like trenches like this uh, in the soil and put a wire or you can also do it with a machine now I have developed also machines for agriculture to uh, put uh, wires in the soil to, to uh, transmit and fertilize uh, the earth. An example, that was in a big field of three hectares of, uh, of, of a farmer in north of Germany, and you see parsnip. Parsnip, it's, it's a plant that is uh, quite difficult to grow at huge scale. And uh, you see on the left, a lot more um, uh, vegetation of parsnip uh, uh, on the field with, uh, with uh, a cylindrical um, magnetic antenna. And on the right, less. And, and when he measured the nutrient content, uh, he had 23% more essential oil in the parsnip. So that gives you an idea. It was the plants were a lot bigger. Uh, he had never had so much uh, yield than, than with uh, those uh, electroculture antennas. And but at the similar at the same time, the 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 quality was also a lot better. So maybe you ask yourself, ah, maybe it will work uh, uh, only in Europe, but here is an image of Brazil on bananas. And you see on the right, uh, on top, you see on the right a row of uh, big, big banana plants, uh, trees growing, and in the middle, the, the bananas are still little. 
The only difference they were planted at the same time is that the row on the right is with a cylindrical magnetic antenna. So they grow like two times faster. And below you see the, uh, uh, the same, you see the, the picture below. In the middle, we have the, the, mag the, the cylindrical antenna in the earth and on the sides not. And you see that the further away you go from the middle, the, the, the more uh, little are the banana trees because of that. Mm. So this is the place where they do it already. It's a huge uh, farm in uh, Brazil where they do it already since five years. Uh, also, I have different kind of magnetic antennas. Uh, that, so I show you two, two pictures there. Uh, also the carrots, the carrots you see on the right, also a big carrot and on the left, little carrots. So in the past at that farm, the carrots were always a little like this because of the soil. And when I put uh, the magnetic antennas, uh, they become really huge because magnetic fields are very important for good plant growth and fertility. Another example is on corn. Here they, they collect like 20 tons a hectare of corn in place in comparison with the control field that was seven to eight tons a hectare. That this was in Italy. Here that was in France uh, on cabbages. You see on top the cabbage field growing a lot faster than uh, below. Uh, and it was also with magnetic antennas. Here, this was a cabbage field in Germany. You see on the left, the two pictures on the left, you see uh, uh, that the, the color of the, of the cabbages, the leaves are not so green, uh, less green than on the right. On the right, this is the same soil. Yeah, you have to understand that we didn't change anything with the fertilizers. We just put electroculture with it. And you see that even with the same soil, the, the cabbages grow a lot better. They, have, they, they are full of nutrients, uh, very healthy plants. And on the left, you would think that uh, they, they lack of something uh, because of, of the, the color of the leaves. But no, it's just uh, because uh, on the right, uh, they, they are with. Um, on the field with uh, cylindrical magnetic antennas. Also on wheat fields, you see a huge difference. You see the difference. It's also more than double yield. Huh? If you see the, the grains are a lot bigger and, and also more, uh, you see huge difference. So conclusion of all that, I would say, uh, I think you 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 understand it by yourself. Huh? You you don't need to be very uh, intelligent to understand that to see that that electroculture have a really great potential for successful new agricultural policies. Uh, so uh, I think uh, uh, it's uh, it's really a huge potential. Uh, so uh, it's and and quite easy. So it's also easy and fast implementation. You see. It doesn't need high technology to, to do that. You, you just need uh, magnets, wires, uh, 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 paramagnetic rocks. Uh, so with very simple solutions, we can, we can improve dramatically agriculture. And I think in a country like Sri Lanka and like a, a lot of countries that have difficulty in the world today, uh, even in France, uh, uh, those techniques can really help a lot the farm, the farmers to to continue to grow uh, good products well and health, uh, healthy plants and uh, and, uh, and and big uh, yields um, uh, with less uh, uh, of the of the very expensive uh, uh, fertilizers and so on and pesticides. Um, so it gives a big increase in yields and quality. It's very sustainable because those techniques, when it's like. Um, uh, antennas, uh, once you have put it in, in the field, it will work every year. It, it doesn't uh, deteriorate or very slowly. So yeah, with one antenna, it will work like 10, 20, 30 years in a row without any uh, 
without any maintenance or, or, or changing of pieces. Uh, so it will work very well. You, you don't need to buy every year consumables or fertilizers. You can, uh, uh, when it's installed, uh, it will work every year. Uh, also, a very big advantage, it's a uh, fast and easy learning for the farmers. Uh, uh, when, uh, they, when you show them how to do, they can do it very quickly by, by themselves. Uh, you, you don't need uh, uh, big schools uh, uh, or schooling uh, to, to learn how to do. Uh, but at the, sim at, at the same time, uh, there is a lot of wisdom and knowledge that we can discover and learn to improve all those techniques. And that's why I'm creating like a university of electroculture in France and Europe and uh, where uh, uh, everybody, uh, there are students coming from all over the world to learn those techniques to me uh, since already more than 10 years. So I'm a uh, I'm uh, organizing uh, every year a lot better the the the, the courses and uh, and so we will uh, for sure also invent new techniques and we will improve all those techniques too with time. So it's more about wisdom, uh, knowledge than about uh, uh, money and uh, high technology of of. Uh, of or technology that is expensive. No, uh, here you can do a lot of things, but you just have to know it how to do. So it's more about uh, with with very less material. So it's more about uh, knowledge and wisdom. Um, so and it will also increase the food sovereignty of a country uh, and of a farmer. So it's uh, only good. Uh, to, to have that, that uh, uh, the, the food sovereignty increases uh, in a today world economy, uh, because uh, we see what is happening in the world today. Uh, if we can increase food sovereignty, it's only good for the people all around us. So I would say thank you to all for listening. It was a very little introduction to, to show you the possibilities uh, uh, that are huge uh, with simple techniques and also to show you that there is already a lot of scientific material that we can uh, discover and study um, for, the, for the scientific and students among us. Uh, so you, you see it's, uh, it's a new, new a whole new world of uh, opportunities that uh, uh, opens itself to to uh, to agriculture everywhere in the world. So thank you very much to you and Harsha, and uh, I hope uh, it was a useful presentation for you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Yarik. It was very interesting, and uh, you know, the more information. Yeah. So there are a lot of questions, but the uh, only thing is, you know, that uh, sir, one is there, one question, sir, describe how to make an antenna step by step and what materials were used to make it. That's one question asked by this audience. Anyway, the other, there's another question. Can you translate into Sinhala? That's what one uh, group member is asked. Yes, <clears throat> I will a uh, little bit uh, start yes. explain then. Give me a uh, uh, two minutes. After. Then make the kalabala in Nepal. Make a experiment pack with the other. May Lanka the Kadavata Mahar. Give me a gara, petty feel later. The Mama Rajiki Vijale, the Namasam with Kumbra Kapikara, agriculture, may a petty, may a piece of a pita, again, Kumbra Kanaki. Nangi Kumuridi Api may control experiment at the Makarano, number the Echera, Durata control experiment at Kerenahe, a Doctor Yani Kekamama, communicate Kala, Kara, a Antanas, Eki the Upper Danagan Labuna, Danagan Labuna, Antanas, the Tangwella, Paddy Fields area acre, Goda, Kola Pata Latino. They make a human way Kalitu Athena, Goda, experiment Karanone, control Karanone. So they isolate Kalati in Boni. But Meva, a P, Kalyutuatino, would mum make a Corona Kale, Make Unanduata, Mamma Mekara, make a tapita, a good Sahadekwa additional secretary 
ఇరిగేషన్ డిపార్ట్మెంట్కి మినిస్ట్రీకి చందకి ఎత్తు కదా ఇతను మా మీ అస్త స్థుతివంతం ఎందుకు అని మీ అంటనా సపరేట్ హద్దాన్ని పొలువాం దెన్ ఒకళ్ళ దక్షిణవతి అపే మీ తీను స్తూప స్తూప వరకు దాగబ్లు కూయా అసలు కూ స్ట్రక్చర్ కైల్ దాగబ్ స్తూప అయిల పొడి స్ట్రక్చర్ కైల్ దెన్ గోపురం కేన్ వే కోవిల్ స్ట్రక్చర్ ఈ హెమ్ ఏకమ సంబంధలా తీన్ని దెన్ మీ మిథుమా కేన్ ఆ ఎలక్ట్రో మ్యాగ్నెటిక్ కల్చర్ అగ్రికల్చర్ సిస్టమ్ అపే ఏ దవసరి కేన్ వర్ గోవి తన కేన్ ఏక వైకిన ఎలక్ట్రిక్ మ్యాగ్నెటిక్ ఫీల్డ్ కే దెన్ ఇస్లా మామ రిసర్చ్ పేపర్ ఎక పెన్ ఉండేది రిసర్చ్ పేపర్ ఏ కియాన్ని లంకావ ఉడిన్ బలపవత్తనవా ఎలక్ట్రిక్ జెట్ ఎక్క ఎలక్ట్రిక్ జెట్ ఎక్క ఎలక్ట్రోరియల్ రిచ్ జెట్ సమకీయ ఉడిన్ అపే లంకా ఉడిన్ సంబంధిల తీన లకు అనస్తర తీన ఈ అనస్తరే లంకావడ పతితవన ఒక కరెంట్ ఎక మ్యాగ్నెటిక్ ఫీల్డ్ ఎక అనికుత్ రతవలట సాఫ్ట్ అనికుత్ ఏ ఎలక్ట్రిక్ జెట్ ఎక తీన ఏరియాడ సాఫ్ట్ ఎక్స్ దడి ఏనా నే ఇండ్యూస్ కరెంట్ ఎక ఇండ్యూస్ కని ఉత్పాదన కరెంట్ ఎక ఏ పెడియన వెలావత్ తీన ఉదేవరు దొలహట ఇస్సెల్ల దెన్ అపి మేమ దెన్ అధ్యయన కరన్నోన కాలేక అపి ఇన్నే మేవా ఏ కాలే అపి ముతుం మిత్త మే కల్ల తీన దెన్ శ్రమం కియువాగే అపే వనల్ సహాయ అది దాహతా మారక్ తీనవ పాదమ ఏ పాదమే తీన లేయస్ ఏ లేయస్ తునక్ తీన మిడ్ల్ జటమ మెట్ల్ ఎక తమై మెట్ల్ ఎక తమై అంగల్ అటక తీన ఒయ తీన లోహ దాడు అపి కియన్ ఎకట జకడ జగల్ ఉదాహరణకి එහෙම කිව්වත් මෙටල් ලේයර්ස් විවිධ ලෝහලින් දාලා තියලා උඩටම ලේයක තියෙන හෙවි මෙටල් එක. එහෙම තියෙනවා නම් ලෝකේ ওই වගේ මැද ස්තර තියලා කන්ඩක්ටර් අර්ත් එක ඇවිල්ලා හොඳ සන්නායකයක් මේ විදුලිය. මෙහෙම තිබ්බට පස්සේ ඒ උඩින් ගන්න වයිල් බෝලෙන් ගන්න ආයන ස්තරෙන් ගන්න ඒ කරන්ට් එක ස්ටෝ කරගන්න පුළුවන්. කැපැසිටි එක. ධාරිත එකය. ඔය ධාරිත එකය මම විශ්වාස කරන විදිහට සම්බන්ධ ලා තියෙන්න ඕනේ ඔය රජරට ප්‍රදේශයේ තියෙන භූගල ජල මට්ටමට. ඒ මට්ට සම්බන්ධ වුණා පස්සේ ඒක හරහා ඔය මයිසල පින්න වගේ පළමිනි වලල්ලේ තියෙන ටැංකි වලට වැව් වලට සම්බන්ධ වෙනවා. ඊට පස්සේ එලංග සිස්ටම් එලංග සිස්ටම් එකට අනුකූලව අපේ තියෙන ඊළඟ වැව් ඒවා ඔක්කොම දිගින් දිගට ගිහිලා තියෙනවා. අපි දකින්නවා මේ ලිට්සිටි කියන එක සිවිලයිසේෂන් වල මුල්ම භාගයේ පාවිච්චි කරන්නේ ඇග්‍රිකල්චර් වලට. දැන් අපි ඉලෙක්ට්‍රිසිටි පාවිච්චි කරන්නේ ඉන්ඩස්ට්‍රියල් පර්පස්. ඒ කාලේ පාවිච්චි කරලා තින්නේ ඔය ලෝ ෆ්‍රීකන්සි අඩු ෆ්‍රීකන්සි එකක් තියෙන කරන්ට් එක ඉන්ඩියුස් කරන්නේ පාවිච්චි කරලා තියෙනවා. අපි ඇග්‍රිකල් සිස්ටම් එක හොඳට පැහැදිලි කරලා අපි දකින්නවා අපි කියනවනේ වැබයි දාගමයි ගමයි පන්සලයි කියලා. ඒ කොන්සෙප්ට් එක ඇතුලේ ලොකු ටෙක්නොලොජි එකක් තියෙනවා. ඉස්සලා මම කිව්වාගේ ගෝපුරම් කියන ඔය ස්ට්‍රක්චර් එකේ ඇතුලේ තියෙන්නේ ලිංගම්. දැන් මාත්‍ම ලිංගම් එක ඇත්තද ගාව මැග්නිටික් ෆීල්ඩ් එක වෙනස්. දැන් මැග්නිටික් ෆීල්ඩ් එක ට ආව එතනින් යන එන එනර්ජි එක අපි කියන්නේ කොස්මික් එනර්ජි කියලා ඔය ඉන්ඩියුස් කරන්ට් එකයි මේ මැග්නිටික් ෆීල්ඩ් එකයි. ඒක චේන්ජ් වෙ වුණාට පස්සේ එතනින් දාලා අපි ගන්න වතුර. එතකොට ඒක අපි දෝවල ගන්න කිරි. ඒ ඒ අය ෆලෝවර්ස්ලා බොනවා. मेथुमा මේක යන අධ්‍යයනය කරයි අධ්‍යයනය කරයි මොනවද කරන්න ඕනේ කියලා ඒ අය අපිට කියලා දෙයි ඔයගොල්ලෝ පෙළගස්සවයි රටට අවශ්‍ය දෙයක් මේක ඒ වගේම මේක සම්බන්ධ වෙලා තියෙනවා මයිසල් කිව්වාගේ ඇඩිෂනල් සෙකරටරි අපේ චන්ද්‍රික ඇතුළු මෙතුනිය මෙතුනිය තමයි මාව මේ මුල්ම අවදියේදී මගේ අවස්ථාව සඳහා මාතේ සාකච්ඡා කළා මේ අවශ්‍ය මූලික අදහස් හුවමාරු කරන්න
ඔබ දැකල දන්නවත් ඇති ඔය කන්තලේ පැත්තේ ඔය ට්‍රින්කු පැත්තර වෙන්න පොළොන්නු පැත්තර වෙන්න තියෙනවා තැන් තැන් වල කුළුණු තව සයිකල් ද යකඩ සෝ යකඩ නෙමෙයි මේ ගල් කුළුණු ඒ ගල් කුළුණු හුදෙක්ම සීමාවල් මල ලක්නු කරන්න හදපු කුළුණු නෙවෙයි මෙතුමා ඒක කියනවා ඒ ඔය ඔය පමණක් ගල් කුළුණු වල තියෙන විශේෂත්වයක් ඒ වලින් ඉන්ඩියුස් කරන්නට ඇතුළට ගන්නවා ඒක තියෙන වෙල් යාවල් මැද තියෙන්නේ නැත්තම් අපි ටැන්ක් එකක් මුදුනේ තියෙන්නේ වතුර වතුර රදවන තනක් මුදුනේ තියෙන්නේ ඉතින් මේ වලින් අපිට පේනවා ලංකාව ඔය කොහොමද ඔය කොස්මික් එනර්ජි කියන එක පාවිච්චි කරලා තියෙන්නේ කියලා ඉතින් කලබල වෙන්න එපා මම මේ දේවල් ඔක්කොම ආගාව තියෙනවා මම මේව අවශ්‍ය විදියට විශේෂයෙන්ම අපිට සම්බන්ධව තියෙන මේ වෙලාවෙ ග්‍රාම අභිමානී ඔය මේ सहयोग क्वेश्चन and uh, she is asking is this applicable for the small area small area is then for the you know home garden something like that so what is intensity you have with that uh, height so you have to give some mm. information e yes yes you can all those techniques are very useful in small areas too you can have um, there are techniques that will be more uh, adapted uh, to small areas and not to big areas and other techniques more to big but like uh, the 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 wire with uh, cylindrical magnetic antenna with with the magnet for example you can do in small areas uh, the the round tower you can also do in small areas uh, that then you put a little one um, uh, so it's it's you you can do it in big areas and and very small areas i have even customers that use it on the balcony on the balcony of their apartment <laughs> they use some technique so it's very small so you can really uh, adapt uh, different techniques uh, to each area and no problem mm. thank you thank you uh, professor yani um unlike the other days uh, in sri lanka most of the paddy cultivations there are high tension lines uh, crossing throughout the paddy field is there any effect on that uh, using use of these antennas and uh, these high tension lines yes you have to be careful with high tension lines for the the atmospheric antenna is not it's not really uh, uh, usable uh, under high tension lines because otherwise it would be too, uh, too dangerous but uh, you can use the, the magnetic antennas in the field and the round towers uh, without no any problem uh, even under high tension lines it will work mm -hmm. okay thank you is there any question please i can propose with harsha i can propose to do other presentations and also to show you other techniques uh, because that's only three four techniques i showed you but there are also yes. many others and uh, uh, and then uh, uh, we can also even propose uh, online courses uh, uh, with uh, our presentation uh, with with the very practical aspects how to do if you want so uh, we will talk about it uh, with harsha how how we can organize that 
Yes, Captain Hush, that is a wonderful idea. We'll continue this uh, as a series of uh, um, knowledge dissemination for the Sri Lankans. Okay, looking for that. We'll do. And, and I would really be very, very happy uh, if uh, some of you or, or farmers uh, and, and gardeners uh, begin to do that in their fields. And uh, then you can send me pictures of your results and, and uh, I share it with uh, all over the world uh, to, to make uh, it helps. Everybody that share his uh, results helps to, uh, uh, to, to, to make uh, known uh, all those techniques and, and, to, uh, and, to, yeah, to, and, to, and also to increase the knowledge uh, on how to do uh, because uh, we always discover uh, little things uh, to improve it uh, when we share it all together. Mm. Okay, I think uh, we have come to that end of this session. And uh, this session is actually uh, consists of the uh, concluding remarks of the respective fields, especially from agriculture field and the irrigation the field of Sri Lanka. So here, it is a great time we had with you, uh, Doctor. Now, I would like to invite uh, Professor Buddhi Marabe, is the Senior Professor of uh, University of Peradenia, Department of the Agriculture. So, uh, it is uh, for you to do that concluding remarks of this uh, session. I'm trying to contact, but sometime. Uh... He was here. Yeah, yeah, he's online. For the time being, uh, can you make the, can we go for the second uh, concluding remarks uh, on behalf of the field of irrigation sector in Sri Lanka? And uh, I would like to invite uh, Mrs. Sandhika Tugela, Arizona Secretary of the Irrigation Department, Ministry of Sri Lanka. Uh, thank you very much, uh, first uh, Captain Harsh Korolearachi for uh, giving me this opportunity. Can you all hear me? Yes. Yes, yeah. yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Secondly, Professor Yannick, uh, currently I am actually experiencing uh, power cut at my home, so I'm sorry I can't uh, switch on my video. You can't see me very clearly. So I'll uh, speak on to the audio. Uh, my, I might uh, talk both in Sinhala and English, right? Uh, have you ever thought of how the nature produced this huge bio biomass? Do you know whether uh, this uh, nature uses these chemical fertilizers pesticides and uh, other chemical inputs. Ape Wagawa take a wild pellet, we shall a permanent vegan vegan and api, we shall aya said the run on me while pella ivat curran. Rasa and Ravi Yodel api me while pella beaming ivat curran, make a hurry the act. Me api vat curane shaktiak ne made, make an obacoi villa of Kahari Kalpanakala. Chutak hitan balan. There were no among anip patatio moeno. Captain Harshaki Apui di Hatta, Mahara Kadavata, Kirimatia Gar Kumbure, may with her api trial like a Karan Balua, Namutapi Goyama Vadena with her collar part, Haritavarne, api observe Karata, Vidyad Makwashing, Apita me Asan Samikshan Akaran and Hakuna Evilavi, Covid Vasangate, Hatuing Ape Rata Vahala da Punisa. Uh, I think uh, Namut Apita Idiri the Api again, uh, research a character and a Balapurutuna, Vada, 
විද්‍යානුකූලව කොහොම වුණත් අපි දල වශයෙන් දැක්කා අද ප්‍රසන්ටේෂන් එකේදීත් ඔගොල්ලෝ දකින්න ඇති මේකේ විශාල වෙනස ඉතින් if i talk on uh, irrigation perspective how about a theme like energized irrigation energized water if you provide energized water to field would you think still you need to apply chemical fertilizer and other chemicals for plant growth ai api me ramo tulama hitanne api waga wagathama yedawum kiyala kiyana api pohora dan बीज पहल कर हम पोहर दानी वातुर दानी इट पास बाल नाशक कृमिनाशक सांप्रदायिक राम मेतन लो फ्रीक्वेंसी नाचुरल रेडियो स्वभाव धर्म हेम तीसम मे शाक हद नवा हित फल धर मे शाक स्वभाव धर्म इन सत्वे परहर ने विशाल जैव स्कंद जैव स्कंद इतकोट ओगोल कौर हरे उत्तर दे वगावकितर मे पोषण द्रव्य इवत्कन हिंदा पोहर दोने के मे सांसिद स्वभाव धर्म सिद्ध स्वभाव धर्म गिवेलाकोट स्वाभाविक पारे मे लो फ्रीक्वेंसी नाचुरल रेडियो वेवस एवगेम एक यदो मक्स वगावट दिन वारी जल शक्ति संपन्न करगेशन very catch in word i ca- catch the word very uh, nicely it is uh, it is going to be a new theme in the irrigation i think i am trying to do my best right oh e api kathawa chuttakata tiyala api balama me api dem bauddeyo idhira metana inna godak ay bauddeyo paticca samuppade kela deyak ahala eti yam yam dewal nivaradiwa tiyana nan apite den walaka प्रदेश वाल विस्ट wisdom also a kind of knowledge but it is strengthened by the mental abilities knowledge we gain from uh, books and all but uh, wisdom we have to empowered with our mental stability and the mental strengthness so uh, we have to inculcate the wisdom use in explicit knowledge traditional knowledge and communicate with the nature then only knowledge can be turned into wisdom api mechara me dewal tiyeddi ai api me pilithurata langa no wenne e prashne man obahama tiyena api lang yam yam dewal tiyena wanan विशेष विशाल मोहन पालतीन विलाव अच्छी बल प्रज्ञा 
අපි පාවිච්චි කරලා බලමු ප්‍රඥාව කීප ආකාරයේ කින් ලබා ගන්න පුළුවන් සුතමය ප්‍රඥාව කියන සුතමය ප්‍රඥාව කියන්නේ සීලේ සමාධිය තුලින් සිත් එක්තැන් කරලා වඩාගත් දැනුම අපි දැනුමක් විදියට ඉගෙන ගන්නවා නම් අපිට සුතමය ප්‍රඥාවට ළඟා වෙන්න පුළුවන් එහෙම නැත්තම් අපි තනියම අධ්‍යයනය කරලා ළඟා වෙන්න පුළුවන් භාවනාවන් මගින් ළඟා වෙන්න පුළුවන් මීට වඩා පහසුයි අපිට දැනටමත් මේ දැනුම තියෙන නිසා මේ දැනුම ළඟා කරගන්න ප්‍රඥාවන්ත වෙන්න ඉතින් මේ දැනුමත් එක්ක ප්‍රඥාවන්ත වෙලා අපි මේ දේ කරලා බලමු मनस सहभागीटेड ड्रॉप Captain Harsha, if you yeah. can wait for uh, about a few minutes, Buddhi Marambe is in another meeting. He will be back to this meeting. Okay. Until that, uh, can you uh, have a discussion about this? Yes. And then, uh, if yes, we can open a small time for the uh, time being. Uh, if anyone who want to ask any questions, so you can ask from us. Uh, maybe that uh, the, the future progress of this session. Yes, we are planning for that uh, continuations of uh, lecture series based on this electromagnetic culture, uh, and the other, uh, other there are some uh, organized uh, lectures as well from the Ravana Research and Development Division. So, if you have any comments, you can come up with now. So, we are very much you know that uh, uh, love to uh, the here to you. Please. Uh, Give your ideas and thoughts. You can you can have Professor Buddhi Marade. He is a senior professor of the University of Peradeniya, the the Faculty of Culture. Uh, giving the over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Captain Harsha, for inviting me. I'm so sorry something went wrong with my phone because I'm joining you with my phone. I heard everything what you all said, but unfortunately, I could not log in. Log logging in the sense could not switch on my mic and the and the and the camera. So I am here. Yeah, I am. Thank you, uh, the organizers, for giving me this opportunity, and thank you, Dr. Yannick. I was listening to your full presentation, which gave a lot of information that will be very valuable for Sri Lankan population in Sri Lankan agriculture. Uh, I have gone through some of the work in the past. Yeah, I do understand that. But what you are trying to do is to have electric influences on plant growth and soil fertility, which, according to your own information, has done wonders in the in the conditions. But in order to apply those things in in Sri Lanka, I learned Captain Harsha has also done certain research work. But of course, we have to go ahead and do well designed, well planned work with the involvement of Department of Agriculture, Department of Agrarian Development, and where possible. Try to try to have this research work coordinated uh, in the in the in the presence of Mahavali Authority of Sri Lanka as well. Why I'm saying this is if you want to make it a make it a stay in Sri Lanka, the technology, the recommendation will have to come from mandated institutes. Otherwise, people can come and do anything, but it will not sustain in the future. So my kind request from you, 
move along with research and develop on activities through well-designed research protocols and always get the Department of Agriculture involved in. So Department of Agriculture and Development and Mahavali Authority of Sri Lanka, all government entities will support. Universities can join, but definitely the recommendations should come from the Department of Agriculture. On top of that, uh, I heard Dr. Yannick was talking about these uh, organic, organic technologies as well, which will, that will be suitable for organic farming. I must also suggest at this stage, in order to make sure this gets uh, streamlined in this, under Sri Lankan conditions, whatever the information that you have, scientific information, in a paper format or in a report format, I suggest that you first submit to Department of Agriculture so that they can go ahead and have their have their uh, research work designed. And also, there's a there's a uh, organic for agriculture production and processing standard set by the Sri Lanka Standard Institute. The number is SLS 1324 of 2018. It is important, Harsha and Dr. Yannick, to make sure. The, 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 the technique, the, the principles that we are proposing be incorporated into the Sri Lanka organic standards because that's then and only then this will have a kind of a takeoff, quick takeoff even in the organic agriculture sector and but provided that there are enough scientific information that have been generated in Sri Lanka. So what I see all in all on your presentation is that we Sri Lankans are, have, have always thought of new technologies, always have made efforts to adopt new technologies. Um, and the technologies that you're talking about with scientific evidence, the most important part is the scientific principle. And once that is proposed, I'm sure there'll be a lot of takers even from the Department of Agriculture, but then it has to go through a short process, about one to one and a half year process in order to make sure recommendations are being made. Don't try to, uh, Captain Harsha, we should never make an attempt to short circuit the process because what then result will be a failure at the end. So let it go through the process and make sure that you, you have this Particular, uh, particular technology established in Sri Lanka in the future. Captain Harsha, you told that you have done certain work a little while ago, but then even that work would be beneficial only and only if it comes through a scientifically valid protocol that we are the Department of Agriculture and other state agencies mandated for giving recommendations for different crops. Suppose that you want to bring it for tea cultivation in the future, tea research institute is the one who should get involved in for rubber, rubber research institute. So let's go through that protocol. This is not a waste of time. My point, I have seen technologies coming in and failing without going through the protocol. People do not accept them at the end because still, though people look at a lot of other technologies that are being brought into the country, there's a lot of trust to be made on the recommendations made by the state agency. And if you want to move ahead, if you want to move along and try to see, I'm repeating what I said once again, try to see this particular technology, though we have heard, seen a lot outside the country. If you want to make it established in Sri Lanka and used by farmers through the government blessing, then let's go through this protocol. I'm really happy that uh, quite a number of people who have joined this have learned this and I heard uh, Captain Harsha explaining things into Singhala. So I see based on the questions asked, the interest that has been generated, but that interest can be made into a reality in terms of practice as well as commercial appearances only and only if it goes through the certain procedures and protocols that have been adopted in Sri Lanka. So that's my advice with respect research. We are fully for in supporting new technology and also keep in mind if at all you want to bring it to organic agriculture in Sri Lanka, certified organics or even GAP, good agricultural practices, there are standards that have been developed in country. So make sure you follow the Sri Lankan standards for organic farming is 1324 of 2018. That will give you a sound advice to see which way to look at what process and procedures that we have to uh, follow in order to make sure the technology prosper in Sri Lanka. So Captain Harsha, thank you very, very much for giving me this opportunity to conclude. And Sri Lanka is looking at new technologies in our technologies, whether it's what you call alternator or not, that's not a major issue. If we can make 
our production and agricultural productivity enhanced because we always go through production enhancement, productivity enhancement, right? We had a very bad experience on how technology being introduced or, or, or proliferated, propagated, promoted in Sri Lanka without proper scientific evidence. That's because of that's a that's a very unfortunate illogical decision taken to convert a whole country within a flash to organic farming. We are suffering from that. We should never make such mistakes again, but then bring in such new technologies and to see how step by step the, 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 the Sri Lankan agriculture can revive from the disaster situation that we see because of man-made man -made decisions, unfortunately, and to see how we can prosper in the future. So, Dr. Yannick, let me thank you. For, for, for elaborating all these things, the technologies that you have with your own experience. I learned that you also uh, have a company in, in making sure the technology is developed at different levels. That's a great thing to, to let us know, I mean, for us to listen to it from horse's mouth. And we are, we will be a, a nation that will be happy to accept such technologies, but of course, through recommendation coming from the state in this mandate to do so. So let me wind up, Captain Harsha. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. And I wish you all the very best, Dr. Yannick, in your uh, present and future efforts in, in, in using this uh, technology for the benefit of agriculture. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Captain uh, Harsha. Uh, may I made a, a small comment uh, from, from my side? I yes. think uh, I must thank uh, Professor Marame mentioning all these uh, government institutions, but uh, I have to remind uh, irrigated water is uh, su supplied to all, all our agricultural fields and it is enacted through irrigation ordinance, which is our cultivation meeting also held under the irrigation ordinance. So irrigation department and the irrigation ministry also uh, mm -hmm. irrigate, uh, under the irrigation ordinance also there's a role to play even the cultivation meetings the kannarasim also held under the irrigation ordinance in sri lanka so not only the mahavali authority irrigation department and the irrigation ministry ministry has a role to play please include this under the list of organizations mentioned by Professor Buddhi Marambe. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Chandrika. Uh, Professor, uh, Dr. Yai, do you have anything to say now? Ah, uh, a big thank you for listening and for your advice uh, for in your country. Um, my aim of this presentation was just uh, to inform you of the existence of those techniques and the huge opportunities it can give. And I hope uh, the Department of Agriculture in your country uh, will have a good ear for that, that they, they will see the, the opportunities for their country and that they will uh, begin to do things. I hope so. Uh, I can only wish that for your country, uh, because I think it's it's good for the common interest and for for the people. Even if they do it by their own, they don't really need me. You have already more than nine hundred scientific articles in in uh, international magazines of science. You you have already a lot of uh, work that you can do by yourself, also in your. Uh, in your high school or school or university. So I would be very happy that um, my presentation like a trick to open the minds to uh, that kind of approach. Uh, and I think there is a huge, uh, uh, huge potential for, for the well being of the whole country. So that, that, that's my viewpoint. So I'm ready at any moment to respond to any demand of any uh, department of agriculture of any country that, that wants to begin to do electroculture and some research and protocols and, and whatever they want to do. I'm 100% uh, I'm ready to help to that, uh, to, to, to help to... Uh, um, uh, begin a protocols uh, research about electroculture. It's uh, that, that that is completely why I'm here, 
and uh, why I'm doing this. So uh, uh, I hope uh, we have uh, given, we have planted the seeds, and I hope uh, Sri Lanka will be a fertile uh, soil for electroculture. <laughs> so thank you very much, very much for listening and for your advice. And and Sri Lanka is a beautiful country. I hope uh, one day I can visit your country and your and the beautiful people that are living in it. Thank you. We we'll invite you, sir. Anyway, this is the time for the vote of thanks. Dear sir, Dr. Yani, Kevin, Doreen, sir, I would like to extend my sincere attitude towards you for your dynamic uh, participations and the motivational lecture as the second step of the collaboration research work with the RNDD, Research, research and Development Division, in the field of electromagnetic cultivations techniques used in Europe. It was a great honor and the privilege just for your valuable participant in this event. As the founder of Ravana Research and Development Division, I appreciate you, your efforts in supporting us by accepting my invitation. Spending your valuable time and sharing your knowledge and experience with us. You are skilled in talking about electromagnetic cultivations and its adaptation in Sri Lanka is highly important. Uh, I once again would like to thank you for such a wonderful speech and expert your expect your assistance and the guidance towards the fields of agriculture and associated fields in Sri Lanka in future. Secondly, I would like to express my gratitude to Senior Professor Budhimarabe, the Faculty of Agriculture in University of Peradi for the accepting to process concluding remarks representing field of agriculture in Sri Lanka. Thank you very much, sir. And thirdly, I would like to give a big thanks to Ms. Chandika Atikala, Additional Secretary, the Minister of Education Ministry, and for her concluding remarks, the presenting field of education sector in Sri Lanka. And uh, the fourth, actually, there's a one professor, and she's uh, from uh, Industrial Technology Institute. Professor Ilmi Heba Juliki, Director General of uh, Research and Development, the Industrial Technology Institute of Sri Lanka participate in this program today as an eyewitness. Thank you, Madam, very much for being with us uh, despite your busy schedule. And just uh, one uh, gentleman and lady want to remind here, the present in Rama Bimani, the leader, the Mrs. Uh, Mishari Amudika, the silver. Okay. Me get a lot of uh, to make sure these sessions and uh, in his in her Prasad Desa Vijivi and to make sure this is and thank you very much. So I think that would uh, make uh, information and future we can collaborate with each other and we will make sure in Sri Lanka. Thank you very much. Good night to all of you.